we've got a stack of real interview questions, the kind that might trip up even seasoned coders. You know what they say, right? The devil's in the details and these questions. They get right to the heart of what's really important in medical coding. Yeah, I was looking through them earlier and some seem pretty straightforward, but when you dig a little deeper, it's like, whoa, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Like take this first one, it asks about CPT, HGPCS, and ICD-10-CM. Now, any coder knows these, but why are they so essential? They're the backbone of the entire system, really. Think of it this way. Without those code sets, healthcare would be speaking a million different languages. CPT codes tell you the, what the service a doctor or other healthcare professional provided. HCPCS steps in when you need to bill for a product or service not covered by CPT. And ICD-10-CM. It's all about diagnoses everything, from a runny nose to open heart surgery. So it's all about having a standardized system for everything, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. But how does that actually play out in the real world? Let's say you've got a patient coming in for a standard checkup. Diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, the trifecta. The doctor tells them to keep on with their meds and come back in three months. How does a coder figure out the right E&M code for that? Well, that's where things get interesting. You got to think like a coder, put on your detective hat. The first thing they do is examine the documentation, looking for clues about the complexity of the visit. Was it a quick, how are you feeling? Or did the doctor really dig deep into each condition? Did they discuss lifestyle changes, medication adjustments? That all factors into the e &M code. It's not just about picking a code that vaguely fits the situation. It's about painting a precise picture of that encounter, right? Precisely. It's about using codes to tell the patient's story in a way that everyone in the healthcare system understands. Speaking of painting pictures, those ICD-10 CM notations always remind me of like those cryptic messages in adventure movies, you know, things like AHACC 2019 1Q2223. Can you decode those for us? They can definitely seem like a secret code, but once you know what you're looking for, it clicks. That specific notation is basically a roadmap. It's telling you, hey, if you want more information on this particular code, go check out the American Hospital Association's coding clinic from 2019, first quarter, pages 22 and 23. So they're like little footnotes, but for medical codes. Exactly. And don't forget the CM in ICD-10-CM, that stands for clinical modification, meaning it's specifically tailored for the U.S. healthcare system. We like to do things our way, you know. Makes sense. And speaking of doing things a certain way, isn't using ICD-10-CM actually required by law. It's not just a suggestion. Right? That's right. Back in 2015, the U.S. government made ICD-10-CM mandatory for any healthcare transactions covered under IPA. Wow, I didn't realize it was a legal requirement. Oh, yeah, it was a huge shift. Think of it like going from handwritten letters to email overnight. It really shook things up, but for the better, mostly. It's made everything so much more efficient, especially when it comes to sharing health information between different providers and insurers. It's amazing how one change can have such a ripple effect. Now, shifting gears a bit, one of the interview questions we have focuses on going above and beyond. Have you ever had a coding situation where you really had to go the extra mile? Oh, definitely. Early in my career, I had this case, and the documentation was a mess. I'm talking about seriously vague descriptions. I spent days poring over medical journals, cross-referencing every guideline I could find, even called up some colleagues for their input. It felt like I was piecing together a giant jigsaw puzzle. Intense. So what happened? I finally cracked the code. It took some serious digging, but that feeling when I finally got it right, priceless. That's when I really learned the importance of never giving up and always being resourceful. You've got to be a bit of a bloodhound in this field, right? <laughs> always sniffing out clues. Speaking of which, how do you stay on top of all the latest changes in coding? It seems like the guidelines are constantly being updated. It's true. It's like a never-ending game of catch-up. I make it a point to stay active in the coding community, attending webinars, listening to podcasts like this one, and subscribing to industry newsletters. What are some of your go-to resources? Oh, Ahima is a must-have. They have fantastic resources and educational materials. And I always keep an eye on CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. They're the ones calling the shots, so to speak. Right. you got to go straight to the source. Yeah. Okay, now for the million-dollar question. Have you ever come across a coding scenario so ridiculously tricky that it would make our listeners' heads spin? Oh, I've got one. <laughs> Imagine this. You've got a patient who's had multiple procedures done in a single session, right? And the documentation you're working with looks like it was written in a hurricane. Total chaos. I had to channel my inner Sherlock Holmes for that one. I can only imagine. So how'd you even begin to tackle that? 
First things first, I went through that operative report with a fine-tooth comb. Every word, every line. Then I started cross-referencing everything with the coding guidelines, making sure I wasn't missing anything. And you know what? Sometimes you just have to admit defeat in call and reinforcements. I reached out to the physician who performed the procedures for clarification. It happens to the best of us. Teamwork is key. What did that experience teach you about coding? It really solidified the importance of clear and concise documentation. One little mistake, one vague description can throw the entire process off. And honestly, don't be afraid to ask for help. A second pair of eyes can catch things you might have missed. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about those potentially awkward situations. Yeah. What happens when you, as a coder, disagree with the coding results? Or even trickier, when you disagree with a doctor's instructions? Those are definitely delicate situations. First and foremost, double check your work. Then triple check it. Make sure you have all your ducks in a row. If the discrepancy still stands, approach the provider or whoever you need to speak with, but do it respectfully. Present your findings clearly, back them up with the relevant guidelines, and be open to a discussion. That's good advice for any disagreement, really. Now, another question we have focuses on a coder who's struggling with productivity. What advice would you give someone who's falling behind? It happens. This job can be demanding. The key is figuring out the root cause. Are they bogged down by a particular type of case? Do they need additional training on a specific coding system? Sometimes just talking it through can help. And honestly, never underestimate the power of a good support system. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Speaking of support systems, how should a coder navigate disagreements with more experienced colleagues? Those can be great learning opportunities. It's all about approaching the situation with an open mind. Present your perspective respectfully, support your findings with evidence, but also be open to hearing their point of view. After all, they have more experience for a reason. It's a two-way street, for sure. Yeah. Okay, let's play a quick game of Where's Waldo, but with coding manuals. Mm -hmm. Where would you go to find specific instructions on, say, confirmed HIV cases? Or what about those Z codes? And what if you're dealing with signs and symptoms but don't have a clear diagnosis yet? Where do you even start? The coding manuals are like a treasure trove of information. You just got to know where to look. For confirmed HIV cases, you'd head straight to the section on infectious diseases. Z codes, those are all about factors influencing health status. They've got their own dedicated section. And for those tricky situations where you're dealing with signs and symptoms but no concrete diagnosis, the guidelines will outline how to code those appropriately. It's like being a detective but for medical codes. Now, let's talk about a topic that often causes confusion. Medicare. What's the most crucial thing for coders to remember about the difference between traditional Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans? Ah, yes. Medicare, a whole other world. The key takeaway is that while they both fall under the umbrella of Medicare, they operate under different rules and regulations. Traditional Medicare is managed by the federal government, while Medicare Advantage plans are offered through private insurance companies. This means that their coverage policies, billing procedures, and even the codes they use can vary wildly. So coders need to be extra vigilant when it comes to Medicare. And speaking of things that require extra attention, one last question for you. It's about the global package concept. Can you break down what that entails and why it's important? The global package is essentially a bundled payment model that's frequently used for surgical procedures. It covers a range of services related to the surgery, from the pre-op visits to the actual procedure itself, and even post-op care within a certain time frame, which is typically 90 days. So it streamlines the billing process for surgical procedures. Exactly. It simplifies things for both the provider and the patient, ensuring everyone is on the same page about what's covered and what's not. Well, there you have it. We covered a lot of ground today, from the nitty-gritty details of different code sets to the importance of clear documentation, ethical considerations, and even navigating those tricky situations that can arise when you're a medical coder. It's a fascinating field, and one that requires constant learning and a keen eye for detail. Absolutely. Medical coders might work behind the scenes, but they play a vital role in ensuring the smooth functioning of the entire healthcare system. Couldn't agree more. And for our listeners, here's a final thought to ponder. With the rapid advancement of technology, how do you envision the future of medical coding evolving? Will AI take over completely? Or will human expertise always be essential? Something to think about as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of medical coding. 